All right, here we are. Take two uh, for today. Sorry, I had the uh, orientation lock on my phone, so I was sideways for everybody. Um, so I'm Dr. Adam Saad. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon here in New Jersey. Uh, focus on reconstruction mostly. We like to work uh, with avascular necrosis, which is what we'll be talking about today. Uh, we'll try to focus on hips, shoulders, wrists, and all the bones other than the ankle. We did do the ankle and distal leg last week. That video is archived on our website if you'd like to review it. Um, but we'll answer a lot of the same questions, hopefully. <coughs> um, if you have specific questions, what you do is you type them in the comment box. They'll pop up for me, and I will try to answer them. The thing I try to stay away from in these things is answering specific medical questions about specific uh, issues uh, just because it's hard for me really to comment without looking at your imaging or looking at uh, your medical history and things of that nature. Um, so I'm sure many of you know what avascular necrosis is, but just briefly, avascular necrosis is when the blood supply to the bone is decreased for whatever reason um, that may be, and the bone starts to die. Avascular meaning lack of blood supply, necrosis meaning the bone dies. Um, why it happens can vary in many different people. There are many causes that um, are known, such as steroids and alcohol, as well as trauma, but the majority of the time people actually don't know what caused their AVN. Um, the treatment for AVN is um, usually grouped into three things. One is core decompression, one is vascularized grafting, and one is joint pain, or I'm sorry, joint replacement. I focus on the second one, which is vascularized bone grafting. That's just uh, medical terminology for taking bone from one area and putting it in the bone that is affected. We have our first question here from Teresina. Sorry. I'm going to hit the see more and see if it works. What solutions for AVN when it's tibia, femur, above or below knee or spine? Um, it really depends on where the AVN is itself. AVN of the long bones, um, I haven't treated before with bone grafting. I'm open to the idea of doing it, but we haven't done it before. Spine, uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to treat because it's usually not going to be an isolated spot. Um, the people that develop AVN in multiple, multiple places generally have um, a overwhelming cause, which means that it's hard for me to treat because the bone that I move is just as affected as the bone of the spines. Um, I see we're up to eight people, so if anyone's out there, you can feel free to, to shout your question out, um, or else I'll just keep talking, which may or may not be good for most people. I don't know. Um, so we, uh, I haven't done specifically the spine before. Um, I would like to do the, the tibia or femur if it's an isolated spot. The reason being is that I move one piece of bone to where the, the, the bone is affected. And when you do that, you, you can only treat one spot. If the person has ABN along the entirety of the femur, I, I can't move a big enough piece to treat that whole affected area. Generally, the people that are candidates for vascularized bone grafting are um, overall relatively healthy. The biggest thing is they can't have a clotting disorder. Um, clotting disorders don't allow for me to do the surgery, and that's because when I move the blood vessel and the bone with it, the clots will form in the blood vessels that I do the surgery on. And if clots form in the blood vessels, then basically the bone I move doesn't live. So the biggest thing that can happen, or the worst thing that can happen is, is I move the bone and the bone doesn't live. And People that have clotting disorders are generally uh, where that would happen. Um, the so the general in general the candidates for our surgery are, are relatively healthy. Don't, you know they can have some diseases like uh, high blood pressure things like that, but generally don't have any clotting disorders. Generally are in good health. Um, you know no heart attacks things like that. But um, you know the biggest thing like I said is the clotting disorder. Uh, let's see. Oh Jennifer just joined. Hi Jennifer. Nice to see you again. Even though I don't see you on here, I'm sure you see me. Um, but if anyone wants to ask any questions, feel free to. Let's see what else do my tips say today. 
Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, if, if I don't get to your question or if you see this video later tonight and, and realize that it's not live, um, you can feel free to send your questions in through our web portal. Um, advancedreconstruction.com has the portal. Um, and there's, you know, uh, there should be links on this video as well. So Jennifer says, I have AVN in my wrist. That's pretty painful. What's the best way to save them? Would it be similar to the ankle procedure? Well, Jennifer, no. Um, and yes. So the first thing we can actually do is something called a HORI procedure, H-O-R-I. And that's where we take a blood vessel that runs in your hand. We make a hole in one of the bones, and then we put the blood vessel in there. We've done this recently with good success. Um, do you know which bone is affected in your wrist, or it's just the wrist in general? Um, that would be the key, is if it's just one bone, there's something called Kienbach's disease, uh, where it's avian and lunate. Um, there's also uh, scaphoid, things like that. So it depends what bones are affected. Stefan Schutze, I think I said that right, right, Stefan? Maybe a nice German name. Um, hi. Jennifer says, elbows, local surgeon says, because uh, it's small, I can do core decompression. Sure, when it's, when it's isolated to one area, you can do core decompression, but core decompression works by releasing the pressure in the bone that's built up from the bone dying. When the bone dies, it swells, and believe it or not, the swelling causes more bone dying. So the idea of core decompression is to release that swelling so that less bone dies. But... Um, when someone like you, Jennifer, that has it in, in a lot of the bones, that may not be as effective. So vascularized grafting might be more effective for you. Um, it's most of the bones in your wrist. I don't, we'd have to look at your scan and see what um, specifically we try to do with your wrist. Um, I would you know, go over that with the hand surgeon I work with, and we could try to figure out a plan for you. But there are other options besides vascularized bone grafting, especially with the wrist. Um, other joints tend to proceed to joint replacement, even elbow, shoulder, uh, knees, hips, and that kind of thing. Sharon Tabler, does AVN cause my white blood count to rise? I don't think so, Sharon. Um, AVN is a disease of blood vessels. It's not really a disease of white blood cells, which are the cells that our body used to fight infection. Um, you could have a background reason that's causing your blood vest, your, your white count to rise as well as causing the AVN, um, but I think you would know that. Um, but it's, it, it hasn't been shown that AVN would cause any what we call blood dyscrasia, which is when the uh, blood cell counts are off. So that's definitely something you want to get worked up. Um, I would recommend either a hematologist or your primary care doc would be a good person to start with. But as far as I've seen, there's no relation between white blood count and AVN. Hope that's helpful to you. Jen says, told replacements in wrists and elbows are infancy and will do more damage than fusion. I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, um, but, you know, it, it's up to the individual orthopedist, of course. Um, I can certainly give you an opinion if you want to send me your images, and I'll go over them with my uh, hand surgeon. Um, Fusion, the problem with fusion is, is there's no mobility to it, so uh, obviously you can't move, and that's really an issue with your elbows, especially because it renders your arms uh, more useless, so I guess is the best word, but when your elbows are stuck, you can't really use your hands as well. So I don't know if I would look at it for elbows. Wrist isn't as big a deal. Um, it really depends what your goals are, if your goals are pain relief or, or what. So, But I think looking at your imaging would be really the key for the whole thing. Sorry. I'm not supposed to touch my face. I have a lot of tips on, on my box over here. Um, I'm trying to do well. Let's see. Sharon, looks like you got cut off. And Jen says she'll send in her imaging. Uh, if you want to send your imaging, you can use our portal. Um, you can email my, my PA, Alex. Uh, I think her email will be in the, in the section at some point. Let's see. Jen Malaby says, hers seems to be spreading, navicular, metatarsal, and now shoulder. I mean, I have an underlying disorder, and surgery is an option. Um, it depends, Jen. Some people never find a reason uh, for having AVN. 
and they can just have it in multiple joints. Uh, usually people that have it in multiple areas though do have an underlying cause such as a history of steroid use, uh, chemotherapy, something along those lines. You may just not have sourced yours out yet. It's not so much that it's spreading, it's more that you're seeing the different bones affected at different times. AVN takes a while to show up on scans because it, once the bone starts to die, your body tries to regenerate it, and after that uh, isn't able to do it anymore, you start to see evidence of it on scans. So it's not that it's spreading so much that all the bones were affected, it's just certain bones progressed to die and certain ones didn't. Um, but yeah, you'd want to work that up to see if you could find a specific cause. Uh, as far as surgery not being really an option, it depends really on what bones we're talking about and what you're trying to accomplish. With vascularized bone grafting, there's only so much bone I can move around, so we try to move it to the uh, appropriate spots that really would get the most out of the moving. Um, but if the area where I take the bone from is affected, then clearly I cannot use it. Uh, and I take the bone from around the knees in general, so if those areas are affected, it may not work as well. However, sometimes we can plug blood vessels into the bone itself without that, uh, like in the wrist. I hope that's helpful. Christina, how does someone know if AVN? I have a coworker who has constant hip and pain. Their doctor says there's nothing to do unless the pain gets worse. Uh, the way to know, uh, Christina, is that they have to get imaging, to tell you the truth. To see it on x-ray is difficult, really MRI or CAT scan is the best result uh, or best way to see it. I would encourage them to see a hip surgeon like either an orthopedist or someone like that uh, or their primary care should really be able to order them, order them something. Um, but the diagnosis is made by imaging. In general, MRI is the best, but CAT scan can show it as well. If you see it on x-ray, in general that means you're kind of later stage and you might need a hip replacement at that point. And thank you for saying I'm doing great. It's good to have positive reinforcement. I'm sorry I put my finger in the way of the camera. I'm sure you'd rather look at my face than my finger. And Susan, I don't know what that means, damage to tibia 90, uh, to be clear. Damage to tibia was told that only could have amputation. Other op other options, sure. Um, different doctors have different opinions on what can be done. Uh, if it's an isolated tibia area, we can certainly look at it for vascularized bone grafting to see if that would help. I don't know that amputation is the answer for a lot of people, but uh, it may be for some people. But without looking at the imaging, it's hard to say. I would encourage David to submit his imaging so I could take a look at it and give you a more educated answer. Jen says, very helpful, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Sorry. Can I come to New Jersey and have you be my surgeon when I live in Australia? Uh, believe it or not, we have had um, patients come from around the world. I'm part of a large group called the Plastic Surgery Center. Uh, we've, my partners have had people come from all around the world. Um, the hard part, obviously, is the insurance stuff. We've had countries that have universal insurance work with us um, so that we can work stuff out. Obviously, it takes a lot of effort on your end of it, so that's really where it comes down to is, is what your country is willing to do and things of that nature. Um, we're trying to start a medical tourism, uh, what do you call it, program through our, through our practice, but it's still quite in its infancy. But we hope to be able to bring kind of our surgeries to uh, people around the world because I get a fair amount of inquiries from, from different countries. So we can, we're working on figuring that out, to tell you the truth. Uh, let's see. Christina, you're welcome, Christina. Oh, I like those. What are those? Oh, thumbs up. Uh, Rajesh says, thanks for your work. You're welcome. Um, what would I recommend in Europe or India? I don't, every country is different, every um, country's insurance is different. It's hard for me to recommend any specific one person that I don't know in these countries. I think orthopedists are probably the people to go to uh, in the beginning, because the majority of people at AVN are going to end up with joint replacement. That's just the truth of every, uh, you know, hundred inquiries we get, I would say we operate on one or two, and it's just because most people that have AVN have been kind of 
pushed around from doctor to doctor because there's not a lot of people that treat it. And by the time they get to me, they're kind of beyond what I can do for them. Um, so it, it's tough for me to recommend any one person. I would start with an orthopedist. I would try to find someone that's treated AVN before so that they have some experience with it. I know that's hard in some of these countries. But like I said, we're trying to start our tourism, medical tourism. Maybe I can come to a country near you one day. Jen says, you're the best. Thanks, Jen. I agree with you. That was sarcasm, too. Lots of people are impressed uh, with your ankle surgery. Uh, thanks. I, you know, I hope it works for you. Um, I think I scrolled through most of the questions at this point. Feel free to keep asking. We're up to 18 people. We have to beat the foot and ankle people. Come on. We need to be competitive, I think. Um, what else I got on my notes today? I know we had said uh, we we're going to talk about AVN of the knee. Um, one of the things with AVN of the knee is it, the bone that I use is comes from around the knee. So if you have it of the knee, I can't really use that bone. But one of the things I would like to try if someone uh, is interested would be plugging some bone blood vessels into the bone of the knee. Um, it's a procedure we do in the wrist. We just apply it to the, to the knee itself. So that would be one option for that. Let's see. Amber Cornwell says her daughter is 11 with AVN of the hip. They have to wait for growth place to close. Is this true? Yes, Amber. Uh, in general, in pediatrics, if we do anything before the growth plates are closed, the hip itself will stop growing, and the, the patient will end up with one leg much shorter than the other leg. So there's where really our hands are tied until the plates close. Once the plates close, we can do core decompression or vascularized bone grafting. In a female, you're looking at the age of 13 to 14 and sometimes 15. Um, it's just if you do the surgery too early, you might save the bone, but then the bone isn't big enough and you didn't do the patient any favors. Um, let's see here from England. Um, I'm a big Spurs fan. Uh, so maybe I can come see the Spurs and visit with you too. For those of you who don't know, the Spurs are a football team in London. Susan, can you do early cases of avascular necrosis? Yes, my preference is to do early cases of avascular necrosis. The earlier you treat the patient, the better the patient will do. Um, so in general, um, the earlier you treat it, the better. The old dogma of wait and see what happens was with AVN is because people didn't know how to treat it. People didn't have anything to offer. So they just said, come back when your joint is collapsed. And at that point, you get a joint replacement. So they just um, decided that there was nothing to do. And that kind of became the teaching that everyone learns in residency and medical school. Um, but I think the earlier you treat it, the better the chance that you can reestablish a blood flow, the better the chance you can get the bone to live. The longer you wait, the harder it is to do because more bone is dead. Keep bringing that up, which I'm not a big fan of. Jen says, one more on replacing real elbows and wrists. Is, oh. um, I'm not an orthopedist, Jen, so I don't know a ton about the, the actual replacements. I can put you in contact with the guy I use. Uh, if you just send me an email, I'm happy to do that. He can give you a little more info on it. Um, and, and, you know, I've seen the replacements, but, you know, but I, I haven't done them, so it's hard for me to comment uh, really that much on them. Valerie, why don't they have additional CMEs required in AVN? Uh, I would say because AVN is very rare, uh, that most doctors see it once or twice in their career, and, and they're not that interested in it. And, you know, as doctors, we're trained. One of the things they always tell us is to um, not look for zebras, when we're, when we're doing diagnostic stuff. And that means that the un, uncommon stuff is uncommon. So most people don't focus on the uncommon stuff, um, except people that have niche practices, kind of like I do, um, or people sometimes at large universities will be specialists in one little area. But that's, that's the reason is just that there's not a ton of people out there with it, even though on Facebook there's a bunch of groups and it seems like everyone in the world has AVN. The reality is most... Uh, Doctors will never see AVN, so there's no reason to spend a lot of time learning about it. And that's just the reality of it. Amber says, one leg's already shorter than the other. Yeah, that may happen. Uh, spurs are okay. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. They're in second place, I believe. That's pretty good. 
the uh, Elliot, what's the preferred method for submitting MRIs? Preferred method is uh, you contact my PA Alex through our website or through her email, and she can walk you through it. We use Dropbox in general. Patients are able to submit them. I can look at them online. If for some reason we can't get it to work, we have you just mail the disk in and I can take a peek at it. Uh, but really, I need to look at the imaging to make sure that you're a candidate. Susan, hip stage one through three, I told the weight and pain. Can you help? Yes, I think I kind of addressed that, that that's the old way of thinking that just wait until your joint collapses and then come get a joint replacement. So I think vascularized bone grafting should be offered as early as possible. If I could find patients with stage one that had it, then I would treat them, of course. Uh, most people are stage two or three by the time they figure it out. Um, but I, the earlier, the better. For sure, the earlier, the better. So if you have early stage, you know, think if you're aggressive about treatment, you stand the best chance of having a successful outcome. Uh, the, later, the longer you wait, the harder it is to treat. The more bone has died, uh, the, the, the more difficult it will be for us to get a successful result. Stefan, thanks for your time. Have you seen any benefits from non-surgical treatment of early stage AVN, chemical, Vasamax? No. To answer your question, simply no. All these things are out there because nobody um, really knew what to offer people with AVN. There's, there's reams of data showing that vascularized bone grafting is uh, very effective in early stage AVN, uh, but most people just don't know about it. It's a lack of uh, um, people just knowing that it's a good option. So they put people on things like Fosamax or, or you know, or, or uh, other medications mm -hmm. that encourage bone growth, but the problem is not bone growth. The problem with AVN is, is not bone growth. It's not bone death even. The problem with AVN is no blood flow, and the bone starves. The bone lives on blood. When you have no blood flow, the bone dies, and that's, that's the easy way to think about it. So if, you're not, if your medication is not making new blood flow to your bone, you're not treating the cause, and thusly you're not going to treat AVN. You might encourage some bone to grow, but not where there's no blood flow. The bone can't grow there. So what I do is I bring blood flow back, and that's really it. Uh, Carol, you're from the UK, diagnosed uh, you're having a hip replacement. You're very far progressed. I'm sorry to hear that, Carol. Sorry, I hate to see more. See, uh, hold on one second, y'all. When I hit the button to say see more, it does it like it goes away. I don't see the whole comment. Yeah, I'll get you, Carol, full comment. Do you see the whole comment? Though? Yeah, I'll get you one. Well, I don't see it. <laughs> Valerie Smith, if you hear horses whose assumes a horse and not a zebra, right? That's right, ha Valerie. I guess that's the whole statement. Maybe they didn't teach us the whole thing. Carol, let's see. Uh, you have pain in your hips, your knees, and your shoulders. Can you send? Yeah, I'm happy to look at your MRIs, Carol, and see uh, if there's anything we can do for you. You have sickle disease. Well, there is your answer, Carol. Um, you don't need to send your MRIs anymore. Unfortunately, people with sickle disease are uh, prone to clotting. Um, I'm happy to look at your images, but I can't really treat you. Unfortunately, sickle is a terrible disease that, that you know affects a lot of people, and it does cause clotting. So anything I do wouldn't work, unfortunately. I think joint replacement is going to be your best um, way to go for most of your joints that are going to be affected. Uh, you could also look at, at trying to be on blood thinners. Um, and you could talk to you know your primary care doc about that. Uh, Rajesh, are there any known complications to do a hip replacement later in case the graft doesn't succeed? That's a great question. No, uh, there are no complications. The incision I make is small. It's it it will not inhibit anyone from having a joint replacement in the future. Um, you can certainly. Uh, continue to do that. I won't burn any bridges. That's the first rule we have in medicine is do no harm. Um, so for sure, uh, anything I do would not inhibit you from having a joint replacement in the future should you need it. Uh, that's why I think it's worth doing. If you're going to have a core decompression, uh, especially for the hip, you might as well get vascularized grafting because it, it's a pretty much the same procedure. It just is you know, a little bit longer um, of a surgery, but really doesn't add anything to the recovery so it and it doesn't burn any bridges but that's a very good question um, let's see yeah I mean I guess I could talk a little bit more about that core decompression is basically making a hole in the bone and letting the, the swelling out from the bone that can sometimes help the blood the bone stop dying 
So all I'm doing is when they do the core decompression, I'm putting blood vessels in there to help the blood flow return. Uh, Carol says, thank you, you're welcome. You hate Selexine, but that might be my long-term future, I know. Um, there's no good options, unfortunately. When you first out, you have AVN in the joint, what should you do? That's from Susan. Uh, I guess that's a hard answer, Susan. It, I would say it depends. The first thing you should do is, is learn more about AVN. Um, you know, Wikipedia is good, Google's good, all that good stuff. Uh, but I think the first thing you do is learn more about it. The important parts about AVN is how progressed it is, what caused it, and, and is your joint collapsed or not. If you have those answers, essentially you can, you can figure out where to go. If you know what's causing it, like clotting disorder, you can get on anti-clotting stuff. If you know your joint is collapsed, you can just go straight to the orthopedist for your joint replacement. If uh, you have early stage AVN, these are the people that are kind of given the runaround by a lot of doctors because they don't know what to do. Those are the ones that generally end up um, you know, not knowing what to do until their joint collapses. Those are the people that I'm trying to reach in general because I think I have something to offer them you know, while they're waiting, essentially. Is adipose better to harvest stem cells? So from Valerie, uh, the thought on that is yes, that adipose-derived stem cells are better than the bone marrow stem cells. There's not a ton of data out there for use in AVN. There's actually no data. Um, there are doctors offering quote-unquote stem cells. I kind of went into this in the last one. I don't necessarily want to get into it again, other than there's no proof to, to show that it works. Um, you know, it's, it, it may be something in the future, but not something that's currently uh, going to, you know, that anyone should really tell you is going to work for AVN, because nobody knows the truth for sure. Susan says, oh, led, yeah, it was good you found us. We're glad you found us, Susan. Um, and she's walking without pain. So that's the idea. But Susan, um, I'm sure she won't mind me sharing, she had broken her ankle in a car accident and developed AVN. Um, she had non-collapsed AVN of the talus, which we successfully kind of treated with, uh, with the vascularized bone grafting. Um, but she had early stage, and so the, those people tend to do fairly well. Uh, Rajesh, another question. You've gone to cordy compression with bone marrow injection. does not seem to have worked. And pre-collapse, in this case, can you be a candidate? Yeah, even if you've had um, core decompression already, we can still do the procedure. You already kind of have the canal, so we just kind of open the canal again, and then we put the vascularized bone through that canal. Yeah, so you, you can um, still be a, a candidate. Uh, I think that was the last question for right this second. Oh, there's Jen. Um, uh, Jen says she had cordy compression on her hip, knees, all three failed, and I needed them replaced. Kind of felt like a science experiment. Uh, I understand what you mean, Jen, but it's not that you're a science experiment. It's that that's what they have to offer, um, you know, and that's that's all it is, is that the most orthopedists can only offer a cord decompression before collapse. They don't have anything else to, to say to you. Um, so they try it, and most of them are pretty frank, and they'll tell you that it, it doesn't have a great success rate. What are my success rates? Uh, I think I went into this a little bit on the last one. Success in AVN is kind of a difficult thing to describe or define. Success can be uh, less pain. Success can be saving the joint. Success can be putting off joint replacement. Um, of the patients we've done, they've all had pain uh, decrease. Um, the ones that were already collapsed um, are still collapsed. They haven't become uncollapsed. Nobody's progressed to joint replacement yet. It uh, doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but, you know, everyone that I've done has had a relief of their pain, which, or not relief, but decrease of their pain. Um, so, to me, that's the first goal with the surgery is to make the pain. Any deaths? Oh, Valerie. Uh, I'm a plastic surgeon, um, so I, I, I don't like to have deaths for sure, knock on wood. Um, I haven't had any deaths, not in this or anything else I, I've done. Um, could it happen, I guess, but the surgery generally is very safe. There's minimal bleeding. We do most of the surgery actually under tourniquet. Um, the patients go home the next day. It's, it's you know, it's major surgery, um, but it's certainly not anything that I think would cause anyone to lose their life. Um, you scared me there, Valerie, I got to tell you. But 
no, no, no deaths. No, actually, no complications really. Um, I think one of our patients has a little bit of numbness in the leg, uh, but sometimes that's not the worst thing in AVN because it can make the pain a little bit better. Um, everyone's from where I've taken the the graft from is healed just just fine. There's there's an incision there, but that's about it. Uh, that's all right, Valerie. I know you didn't um, mean to scare me. Um, but everyone has done fairly well. I think most people have spent one night in the hospital. Any recommendations for post-surgery post success besides exercise and ice? Well, Gail, it depends, I guess, on what surgery you have. For my surgery, um, the keys to success are not walking on the joint for uh, about six weeks and then to start therapy and to adhere very tightly to the therapy. Um, after that, you know, obviously if there's a cause like smoking, not to smoke, or drinking, not to drink, things like that. Jen, do we do all joints or only knee and ankle feet? Uh, I'm open to doing all joints. I haven't done um, all of them yet. I, I, I'm happy to try them. It's just a matter of finding the right patient, I would say. Gail, you're three days post-op. Three days post-op from what, dear? Um, it depends on what, what you had done. Ravi, I missed the first half of your session. Who are good candidates for AVN? So, again, the good candidates for my surgery are people with early stage AVN that are, their joints are non-collapsed and that are relatively healthy. Uh, you know, use the term relatively, meaning that you can have some things like diabetes, blood pressure, and stuff like that, but people that are on blood thinners for stents in their heart probably aren't the best candidate. The younger patients tend to do a little bit better as well. Gail, right total hip. Okay. Uh, I, would, I would talk to your orthopedist, Gail, for as far as what their protocol is. Most hip replacements are up and walking around the next day, but um, your orthopedist will know better than me. What blood thinners do I use? I actually don't use blood thinners, Valerie. Um, I use something to prevent deep vein thrombosis, which is called Lovenox. That's just when you're in the hospital, but it's a small dose. And then patients don't go home on any blood thinners. Rajesh, bilateral procedure at the same time, that's a good question. In general, I would say no, because you need to have one of your legs to use to have crutches. Um, so we wouldn't do both legs at the same time. In general, we do the leg that we think is, is a little bit further along first, because that's the one that's dying. Um, unless it was collapsed, then we would do the other leg. But in general, I wouldn't do bilateral, uh, just because you need to be able to, to weight bear on the other leg um, while, the, while the one we operated on is healing. But that's a great question. Uh, AVN in bilateral hips is very common, especially in idiopathic, meaning that we don't know what caused it, or in alcohol use. Um, it's super common. Christina, what made me choose AVN as my niche? I think I answered this last week. Um, I'm in a practice of 11 plastic surgeons in New Jersey. Uh, we all have a niche part of our practice. Um, so when I was just joining this practice, they said find, an, we call them orphan diseases, diseases that no one else treats. So I read a couple papers on AVN. I became interested in it. I saw you treat it with uh, microsurgery, which I love to do. So it just kind of fell into it, and then here we are doing Facebook Live. Susan, how long are you non-weight bearing with hips? Six weeks uh, non-weight bearing. Then we do the x-ray. If everything looks good, we start you on toe touch, and you're full weight bearing by three months in general. Valerie, do we fill out temporary uh, disability paperwork and exams for VA? I haven't done any VA people recently, but uh, we do work with um, all the disability paperwork. Ravi. How is microsurgery different than standard resurfacing replacement? Um, my understanding that the hip joint somehow comes back to life. Yeah. Um, so microsurgery is different in that I'm, I'm taking blood vessels from one area with bone, and then I'm putting that bone in the hip and reconnecting the blood vessels under a microscope. That means I have what's called a donor artery that's going to bring new blood to the joint. So yes, I'm kind of bringing it back to life the same way in heart surgery when people have what's called bypass. It means that they're bringing new blood flow to the heart. I'm just bringing new blood flow to the bone. That's different than replacement because in replacement, they're just cutting the bone out and throwing it in the trash and putting in one they took out of a box made of metal into your hip. Um, resurfacing just basically is a similar procedure but not quite as aggressive. But neither of those really treat the cause of AVN, which is no blood flow to the bone. Uh, they just treat the um, result of it, which is dead bone. So I'm trying to treat the cause is, is, is the difference, the gist of the difference between the two. Um, all right. I don't know. We kind of ran out of comments at this point. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, of course.
course, um, you know, this uh, video will be cataloged on the website. We have some introductions to do here. This is Alex, my PA. Say hi. Hi. Um, she's the one that, she's the one you talk to before you get to me. Um, she'll help you with everything out there. This is Ryan. He sets up our AVN stuff. Say hi, Ryan. Um, so he's the one to thank for all this AVN stuff. Of course, some of my patients are on this today, Susan and... Um, Jennifer, of course, thank you to to you guys for for helping with all of this. Susan really is the uh, I think the ABN spokesperson for the world right now. She seems to be very interested, so she's the one that sets all this up. Uh, one last question, and then I'm going to go. Okay, uh, David, would you recommend hip and knee replacement at the same time? <sighs> no, it, it's just too much, and I don't think many orthopedists would either, to tell you the truth. Um, so I hope everyone has a good night. Uh, I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.